Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me today, or Humphrey. Um, unfortunately, Humphrey couldn't make it, so um, I'm here to give his presentation. Um, I'm a PhD student at Newcastle University, and thank you. Um, and I'm going to be presenting um, Humphrey's work, which is part of his PhD, um, on the effect of carrot consumption on intestinal cancer risk. Um, do I need to point this? Um, so colorectal cancer is a major cause of death in the developed world, um, and epidemiological studies have associated um, a higher intake of fruit and vegetables with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer, and this has particular associations with carrot consumption. Um, and carrots contain a lot of bioactive compounds um, that are suggested to re re reduce colorectal cancer risk. Um, so uh, the diet is seen to affect colorectal cancer risk both in a positive and a negative way, but also um, gene mutations, so um, genetic susceptibility can influence um, colorectal cancer risk as well. Um, so um, uh, gene mutations in the APC gene um, are linked to colorectal cancer, and we have a mouse model that we can use which will um, simulate this gene mutation um, which means that the mice are more susceptible to um, intestinal ad uh, adenomas. Um, uh, so this provides us with a model to investigate um, colorectal cancer, and um, we can test different diet effects on these mice. Um, and previous studies have shown that um, a carrot diet uh, fed to these mice can um, reduce intestinal cancer risk. Um, so if I just tell you a little bit about um, the previous studies. So there was um, a rat study in which they um, induced uh, intestinal cancer by using a carcinogen. Um, and then the, uh, the rats were fed um, a, a, carrot, um, a carrot diet compared to a control diet. Um, and intestinal cancer risk was reduced by 30%. Um, and then another um, study, a mouse study, which was um, conducted at Newcastle University, they also um, fed um, these APC mice with um, a carrot-enriched diet, and compared to control, again, it reduced um, cancer risk. Um, so Humphrey wanted to um, continue these studies, um, and he was looking specifically at whether the um, tumours were induced either at the initiation stage or at the progression stage. So um, he also wanted to look at um, a more controlled diet because the, um, the previous studies were um, looking at a powdered diet. So they didn't know whether the, um, the, the powdered carrot was uh, uniform throughout the, um, throughout the diet. And um, the other previous mouse study as well, they had created pellets. But again, the pellets weren't, create, uh, weren't made in a particularly uniform fashion um, and had just been dried at room temperature. So um, they weren't sure if they had been dried thoroughly. So um, Humphrey was given... Um, uh, had, had made some mouse chow. So he had um, a controlled mouse chow, which was um, just normal mouse um, feed, uh, which was just powder, and then he had taken the powder and he'd added 20% um, carrot, freeze-dried carrot, into the mix, and he'd asked um, a pet food manufacturer to create the um, pellets for him, um, and the pellets were um, created um, by uh, a normal um, pet food manufacturer standards in normal um, uh, manufacturing facility, and the way that they had created them was by um, heating them to uh, 90 to 120 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. So he'd, um, uh, he then fed his, uh, he took his mice, so he had six um, female mice, which were wild type mice, and he had um, given them um, a diet for two weeks, either the control or the carrot diet, um, and he then mated them with the APC mutant um, male mice um, and continued the diets throughout pregnancy and lactation. Um, the pups, when they were born, were then um, randomized onto um, t the two diets, so either the control or the carrot diet. Um, and both um, wild type and the mutant offspring were created. Um, and then the pups were weighed at weaning and weekly until they were um, euthanized um, at 15 weeks postnatal. Um, so feed intake was measured as total feed consumed per cage, um, and there were a number of mice in each cage. Um, and then um, 
when they were euthanised, intestinal tumour number, size and location were recorded alongside the body and organ weights. So this is just um, a, a diagram to show you the, um, the methodology. So um, there's the two-week acclimatisation period at the beginning before mating on the control and the carrot diet. Um, and then there was a nine-week period in which mating, gestation, and lactation took place. And again, they carried on with the control or the carrot diet. And then once the pups were weaned, they were weaned on to either the carrot or the control diet, giving four groups at the end. Um, and then again, so the, the tumours were um, analysed um, after they were euthanised. So um, looking first at the effect of the maternal diet, so the, um, the graph on the right, you can see that there's no difference between the control and the carrot-enriched diet, um, which suggests that the, um, the effect of the carrot diet is actually um, at the progression stage rather than the initiation stage, as initiation um, is thought to start um, during uh, lactation and in utero. Um, and if we look at the um, post-weaning diet, you can see that the... Um, the carrot-enriched diet is actually giving a higher tumour number than the control. Now, obviously, this isn't what we were expecting. Um, sorry, this was not the presentation that I was shown. Uh, so, um, so the results are suggesting that there's something inside the carrot-enriched diet which may be influencing the tumour growth, but not the tumour initiation. Um, I'm really sorry. This actually isn't the presentation that I was given, and it did have some more data at the end, which is um, uh, actually further studies that he's done, so I'll just have to talk about it. Um, so he went on to um, investigate... Um, whether there was something different about his study or whether um, the results from the previous studies were incorrect. Um, and he came to the conclusion that it was probably something to do with the mouse child that he was feeding his mice. Um, and as they had been, um, as the difference was that the mouse child had been sent away for manufacture, he was looking at the manufacture process um, and uh, the mouse pellets were heated to a quite high um, temperature, which um, can induce the um, formation of furans, which are a carcinogenic compound. Um, so he then went on to do a further study where he again used a very similar study design. So if we just go back to this. Is that it? Um, so he went to, he um, reformulated his um, mouse powder so he fed his um, mice just the powdered diet without any um, further manufacture or um, interference, just a powdered diet. So again, the control diet and the carrot diet. Um, and he found, um, so again, the methodology was similar, but just uh, at this stage here, he added in an extra group where he tested again the pellets that he had created um, in the previous experiment. Um, and he found that, um, again, the maternal diet had no effect on um, the tumour number, but the, um, the carrot diet had um, reduced the tumour number compared to control, um, and uh, the uh, pellets that he had retested with the mice um, had also reduced the intestinal cancer risk, but not significantly, and it had been... Um, it had an effect that was a lot lower than when he'd first originally um, fed the mice the, um, the pellets. So um, this would suggest that it was something um, within the pellets the first time round that had, um, ha was having a carcinogenic effect. Um, and uh, this would also lead us to conclude that it was the furans because they're actually a volatile compound. So over the storage of the 12 months that he had stored the pellets um, from the original study, the furans would have um, evaporated off um, so that they were then not having as much of an effect when um, they were fed the second time around. So hopefully this is um, showing you that uh, carrot is not a carcinogenic diet. Um, and so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm really sorry that uh, the presentation wasn't quite right, and I'm sorry that Humphrey isn't here to um, answer your questions properly, but um, if anybody's got any questions, um, please feel free.
Emmanuel here. Um, uh, do you think that the way the, the carrots are prepared to feed the mice uh, can have a, an effect on the results? Because it's uh, one of the questions we always have when we want to do this kind of test. Um, so do you mean the, the powdered diet? Um, possibly, we I think... Other, we, we, could, we could imagine other... Um, yeah, so um, he was testing um, powder compared to pellets. Um, and the previous study that was done at Newcastle, they created pellets just in the lab. Um, and we weren't sure that they were um, completely dry and completely uniform, which is why we got the pet manufacturer to make them. Um, and when we weren't sure, again, whether the, uniform, the powder was uniform with the um, freeze-dried carrot um, powder and the normal chow. Um, but I don't think the mice could preferentially choose the bits of carrot inside the powder because it was, I think it was quite well integrated. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure how else it would be, be done. My question was also about the compounds that we can have in the pellet, and depending the, the way they are prepared, maybe the, the effect, the potential effect of the compounds regarding uh, uh, tumors. Do you can mean be the carcinogens? Different. Sorry? The carcinogens. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, maybe the antioxidant and all the compounds that can have an effect on the carcinogenesis. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the, um, the carrots that were prepared inside the feed, they were blanched before they were freeze-dried. So um, there may, might be some loss in heat, um, but there's also evidence to show that the, the carrot is actually still active when it's frozen. Um, so by blanching it, you're destroying the enzymes that are then um, destroying the compounds. So this was kind of the best, the best way that we, we could think of to prepare them. Hi, I'm Monica. Uh, just a question. Would it be uh, of any use to use um, zebrafish uh, embryos using uh, an injection with the, uh, keratin, the carrots um, to improve the results? Now you're using uh, mice and you're observing tumors, but you might as well use zebrafish models. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that, I'm afraid. Oh, too bad. <laughs> um, but <laughs> okay. I'm actually, my PhD is going on to look at the effect in humans. So um, I've got a poster later if you want to come down and see my methodology. Um, okay. But yeah, I'm looking at, at the effects in humans. So thanks for the sort answer. Of next step up. Okay. <laughs> Here's another one. Ralf Wells from the University of Freiburg. Do you know whether there is any study on furans in uh, meals containing carrots? Um, I don't know, I'm afraid. Um, we think the furans are forming because of the heat effect, um, and uh, there has been a study looking at um, lots of different fruit and vegetables and uh, things like coffee as well, and it's the browning effect that is creating the furans. Um, so it is the, the sort of heating to a high heat that's creating those. Um, so I don't think they occur naturally at very high levels, at least, um, but it is the heating that's, um, that's forming these compounds.